Hey guys, welcome. I know that uh, many of you were probably expecting a video on how to determine the speed or the ISO of the silver gelatin emulsion that we made in the video last week. But unfortunately the weather just didn't collaborate with me because it was raining and cloudy for the whole week and uh, I just wasn't able to take advantage of that sunny F16 rule for which I need completely blue skies and uh, constant sun. But here I am, I've decided to finally break out of my studio for a bit and uh, make another video from the field. It's probably gonna be a bit shorter one, but I really wanted to capture this magical moment of, of uh, spring when all this greenery because of the rain and all that just uh, burst into life in a matter of a few days. And the uh, thing that I'm after today are um, those baby ferns that form those beautiful spirals. It's a non-windy day today and uh, I thought it should be a perfect opportunity to make some macro shots. You can see these baby ferns are all over, it's just a matter of finding the one that's gonna seem special to me. Whew, I think I finally found my first candidate, not just because of its uh, beautiful shape, but also because of the background. Remember earlier on, uh, I showed you that everything here is covered in these wild blueberries meaning that 99% of the time your background will be green and uh, also the ferns are green and uh, this is a very problematic in black and white photography especially when you know that the Zebra 4x5 plates I'm shooting today are sensitive to blue light meaning that all the other, other colors will appear much darker especially the green so I was searching for a background that would be much brighter I don't think that red would definitely not do the job um, so there was not many options left but I'm glad that uh, I found this lock here and uh, yeah I will set everything up now and uh, try to make a shot It's ironic, isn't it, how I was telling you at the beginning that there, is, there was no sun for at least the last two weeks and now while I'm making this video, sun just came through. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Okay, so my focus is now set on uh, this part of the fern, but in the meantime, while I was setting up, the wind started to pick up, so I don't know how I'm going to be able to, to take a decent shot. I mean, I'm going to give it a try, of course. I think I might even uh, make two exposures, just so one of them... I mean, I have two times the chance that uh, one of them is going to be sharp. Now the sun is even helping me because uh, it's... Um, now I have much more light and uh, I will definitely have to close the aperture down all the way which is uh, 5.6 on this lens and uh, yeah I'm gonna meter the exposure time let's see these are ISO 2 plates so I cannot expect much but let's see Yeah, the meter is showing me somewhere between uh, one sixth of a second and uh, one fourth and one sixth of a second. I think I'm gonna go. F I'm gonna do one shot at uh, one fourth of a second and uh, one at one eighth of a second, because these macro exposures with a phone meter like this are quite hard to nail. So yeah, 
I mean, I can still alter the the the, the density during development anyway. So, yeah. Let's go with uh, one fourth first. And uh, today I'm gonna be using a final Zebra 4x5 dual glass dry plate holder that uh, I've been designing for the last three to four months. Now it's uh, completely finished, ready for uh, main production and for sale. So I'm gonna link it down below as well. Oh well, this is obviously not a day for macro photography anymore. You know, it's uh, not moving that much, but in macro photography every little shake counts. And there's many here. At this point I could call it a day and return on another, but knowing that nature is in constant movement and that ferns tomorrow are not gonna be the same as today kept me waiting. Ten minutes later and uh, I think I have a chance now. I will pull the dark slide out for the second time. Let's see, three, two, one. Yeah, there was a moment right now that this fern was not sh shaking that much, um, but as you can see, if I blow on it just a little bit, it's starting to shake immediately. I will uh, wait now for my second chance. And now, only a few minutes later, there are rainy clouds coming in. And there is almost no light left. Now it's metering one fourth of a second. And earlier on, when the sun was at its full power, I metered again it, and it showed me one fifteenth to one thirtieth of a second. I think I'm gonna name this video the impossible macro photography. <laughs> Just look and observe how the light is changing very rapidly. Okay, I finally pressed the shutter on both more or less successful shots. I will head back to the darkroom now immediately to develop them and see if any of them are good. So, see you there. I designed this holder in a way that it's really lightweight and also very easy to load and unload. I'm developing like usual in uh, Kodak HC110 Dilution B and uh, I don't know if you noticed but in the top right corner there seems to be a smaller light leak. It appears like it was caused during exposure in the Zebra holder. But that seems strange as I test each and every holder for light leaks by exposing it to full sun for an hour. But just to rule that out completely I did another one hour sun test with paper and there was nothing. So I investigated further and uh, found a tear in the corner of my dark back. Well after a few years of use it's obviously time for a new one. Thank god that uh, there were only a few plates left inside. I'm using a rapid fixer and during fixing I'm turning the plate around just to see if there are any milky areas left. Okay guys, the first plate is developed and to be honest after all the troubles I had on the field I'm quite happy with the results. It was quite overexposed though, so I had to pull it out of the developer only after two minutes of developing. 
but I don't know if this guy is gonna focus or not. The focus seems quite on point. There you go. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to developing the second one. Also this plate has a smaller light leak in the top right corner caused by that small little hole in my uh, dark back. Oh well, another lesson learned, I have to check my equipment on a regular basis. There you go, the second plate developed and in terms of exposure it's perfect. I'm glad that uh, I underexposed from what my, um, what my phone metered. This one also lacks a bit of sharpness, obviously from all the shaking that was going on and all the wind. But yeah, I'm, I'm pleased with this one. I will uh, get both plates drying and uh, see you guys tomorrow. This is the best of the two plates considering the circumstances, my initial expectations were set really low but once again I was pleasantly surprised. Making two shots and underexposing the second one for a bit definitely paid off. In terms of composition I didn't want to leave the ferns in the whole frame but I rather wanted to leave them with enough space to emphasize their delicate and fragile nature. Log running on the diagonal in the background also works very well. If there was zero wind, sharpness would definitely be better, but considering the circumstances, I would hardly wish for more. I really thought that in this video things would run nice and smooth, but the weather and my perseverance complicated things a bit. When you're out there with a really strong desire to shoot a very specific scene and then the weather starts to take things in its own hands, it's really hard to decide what to do. Anyway, I'm glad that I waited and I'm also glad that with this combination of uh, Zebra 4x5 glass dry plates, and uh, zebra dual glass dry plate holder there is really no excuse anymore not to shoot dry plates thanks to all that have decided to give dry plates a try thank you for your support and uh, thanks for watching see you in the next one bye